Okay guys, uh, in today's video, we're gonna talk about uh, keeping some inventory on your yard. Uh, I know for some of you, it's gonna be real difficult. You have limited space. Uh, Matthew and I, we we buy logs every day, okay? I got people all the time uh, dropping by, calling me, you know, had several today. Guy, uh, cousin dropped off some red ash. Never seen one before, it's a red ash. Uh, we'll be sawing that in a later video. We're gonna let it age a while, so you'll probably forget about it the time it shows up one day. But what we're talking about today is I'm sitting there this morning drinking my coffee, and I get a phone call from our local uh, auto parts dealer, and he's called me several times before. He's he has a contact with a electrical company, and anytime they need oak lumber for one of their trailer decks or something or a building project, they'll contact him. And most of the time he'll call me, but uh, he called this morning. They need, they're in a bad need of some three by 12 by 10 foot long white oak planks. He said, I said, uh, how quick you need them? He said, they need them bad. They got to move a piece of equipment Friday and the trailer's broke. I said, well, we'll do it for you today. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to drag out this uh, 12 foot white oak log. And it'll easily square out a 12 by 12, and that'll give us our three, or four, three by 12s. Now, what we're talking about is inventory. You gotta have stuff laying around to use. Uh, we covered this in a couple videos about keeping logs. You know, you gotta keep an eye on how long stuff's laying here. Uh, we got some forest pine over here. We're gonna make go away real soon. It's been here too long. But this oak, I don't even have to think about it for a couple of years. Worst thing it's gonna do is get hard as a rock. But uh, that's our goal today. Uh, we'll be right back. I'll probably show you a picture of some of, some of the piles of oak we got laid around here just for such things as this, as well as cutting our own inventory, different things we like to do. So hang on, we'll be right back. guys Ooh, it's hard to see the sun's bright uh we appreciate you tuning in i'm over on the other side of the yard uh what i got here uh on my left is a stack of 16 foot 17 foot red oak logs uh, i got a little stack of white oak logs here that's actually for a customer job i stacked them in front of the red oak so you couldn't get them mixed together and on the other side of that pile is a pile of 16 foot long white oak uh I don't know about where you're at, but around here, white oak is turned into gold. They're using so much of it making whiskey barrels in Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, all the all the tree guys are selling the number ones to the local log buyers for a healthy premium, and I can't I can't blame them. I can sell these logs myself, but then I don't have anything to satisfy my customers' needs. But I have had to go up on the price because it, it costs considerably more to buy these. So. Hang on, I'm gonna walk over to the other side of the yard and we'll look at another pile. Okay guys, uh, I've walked to the other side of the yard. What I got behind me here is a stack of all 12 foot white oak logs. Uh, where Matthew's over there working. There's is 10 or 12, 12 footers. Uh, as soon as I get this customer lumber out of the way, I'll bring them over here and add them to this pile. Just hadn't done it yet. Now, on the other side of it is a stack of red oak logs. They're not the they're not the best in the world. You know they're not huge by any means, but uh, they make beautiful boards. Now we use red oak for several different things here. Uh, we of course did the siding on our building. Well, y'all a little out square. There we go. We did the siding on a new addition with it. Uh, it makes ex acceptable trailer decking. Uh, this I can sell. At a dollar and a half a foot, board foot, less than I can sell the white oak right now because the white oak is so expensive. 
So this is a little lower budget option for a trailer deck. Uh, don't see any right off hand, but I do have some chested oak over there that needs to come get in this pile. Chested oak, same. It, to me, chested oak is as good as white oak, and red oak is just right there under for trailer decking. But not everybody can afford what white oak's costing right now, so if, if they still want a hardwood, this is a great option. Not to mention it makes beautiful wall boards. The uh, living room, dining room in my house is uh, floor to ceiling, tongue and groove, red oak boards, and there's a few chestnut oak boards mixed in. They have that little chocolate brown color. Beautiful. Uh, these, uh, we got our motor planer up running. These are gonna disappear. I'll be making one by sixes, one by eights, and they'll go in somebody's house and they'll, they'll live a beautiful life people looking at it you know hopefully for years to come so the goal of this video is keeping a little inventory when you can if you can afford it you know buy, buy some logs get up get with your local tree guys your local graders you know anybody with a chainsaw you know some of these guys they're in the business to sell wood some of them's not some of them just want to get rid of it you know i got several tree guys that absolutely don't want to fool with no wood and they'll bring me a half a load of brush and two or three logs and tickle to death to get rid of it. And I'm tickled to get it. So you gotta have a little symbiotic relationship with the different individuals you work with. And you know, we're in a sawmill business. We gotta have lumber. We gotta have logs to make lumber out of. So Matthew's hauling my log into the mill. So I'm gonna hush, get over here and go to work.
guys. Uh, let's talk about why we changed blades three times there real quick. Uh, the first blade change, it was dull. It had been on there a while. I knew that before we started. Uh, the second one we put on, when we sharpened it, we put a little piece of tape on it. And the reason we had taped it, it had a little kink in it. And it, this was probably, it was going to be its last hoorah. Put it on there and it just would not cut. Uh, you say, Matthew, break it in half. He, he fixed it permanently. And uh, you shouldn't be able to break it by hand. No, you shouldn't be able to bend one and snap it by hand. It 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 uh, worked all the it got to work hard and took the temper out of it. Uh, next, we went ahead and put on a Turbo Seven. Actually, we put a we put another four degree on. wasn't happy with it. Yeah, so we changed blades four times. We put another four degree on it, and I just wasn't happy with the cut. Uh, I don't know. It was sharp. The, the scent was good on it. It just, this wood, it wasn't liking it. This is, a, I wouldn't call it a green white oak, but it's soaking wet still inside. So we switched it out for a, a Resharp Turbo 7. Cut laser straight. I'm happy with it. It cuts faster, cuts cleaner. Now, we'd, we'd always talk about we got a plan when we're going to saw a log. My plan for this log was to make a 12 by 12 and go 3, 6, 9, 12. Done. Well, we open it up, and there's a crack that comes all the way to here. So if I make a 12 by 12, one of my 3 by 12s is going to have a nasty crack in it. So Matthew suggested, and I agreed, what we're going to do, it's 18 inches wide. We're going to leave the width alone. We're going to turn it over, and we'll square it down to 12, and then we'll take 3 here, 3 here, 3 here, and 3 here, and leave that crack in the middle. Uh, we'll whack out some 2-inch slabs. If they got a crack in it, it'll be all right. But... You always got to be willing to modify your cut. You need to look at your wood, see if there's any defects you didn't know about. I knew there's a crack on the end, but I didn't dream it went almost four feet into the log. So let's get this done. Okay, we can say we found everything you can imagine in wood. That's a tube of chapstick. And how it got up in that piece of wood, I don't know. But there it is. And we cut it almost straight in half. <laughs> you never know, guys. You just never know.
Okay, guys, uh, that's going to do it. Uh, like I told you earlier, we had to adjust our plan a little bit. The heart of this beautiful log wasn't that good. So, uh, there's four, three by 12s out there. Matthew will show you a picture in a minute. All these two inch slabs, uh, I have customers all the time wanting two inch wide oak, fly edge type stuff. So, we'll stick it, band it, air dry it, and eventually it'll go through the kiln. Uh, one of my tree buddies called me the other day. He needed some true two by fours for uh, stake sides on his uh, dump truck. He broke a couple of them. And Matthew and I always need four by fours for dunnage. And this heart has got so many defects in it. That's good use for it, just dunnage. So uh, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Uh, I hope that helps. You know, a little bit of why you need to keep inventory on, on hand. It's a good paying job today. You know, that, that's real good paying, and all this will eventually pay one day. And, but if I didn't have it, I missed it. So, you know, you got to invest a little money in having logs laying there. If you got any questions, comments, leave them in the, uh, below. I'll be glad to answer them the best I can. There's <laughs> some I have a hard time with, but anyway. Uh, as always, we appreciate Joe Main from Industrial Cutting Tools. Like I tell you, people, this. I tried four degrees and switched back to the Turbo 7 and loved it. <laughs> they are my go-to saw blade. Uh, it's a wood miser double hard from Joe Main Industrial Cutting Tools. If you need them, give them a call. They'll be glad to help you out. And uh, special shout out to Solomon. If y'all don't know, my son-in-law Solomon has two YouTube channels. One of them's Third Beard Fishing and the other one's Eastern Florida Pythons. If you can handle snakes, you'd probably love it, but uh, I can't. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate him editing our videos. If you get a chance, check him out. That's going to do it. Uh, I hope all of you know by now that uh, Matthew and Caitlin are expecting. I'm going to be a grandpa again. It's a privilege and an honor. But uh, give, give them a shout out if you get a chance. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you back at the bill. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.